I'm Martin Anderson in Studio B, where live sessions are brought to you by Sierra Nevada Brewing Company. We are joined by Joe Pug. Great to have you back here. Thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a major user and purveyor of your sponsor. Okay. Of this show. So All right. It's well, very appropriate that I'm here. It's good to keep businesses in business, and that's just what you're doing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, uh, we are also streaming on Facebook, but uh, we are over the airwaves and uh, on the stream at WNCW.org. Joe Pug, uh, back here uh, at WNCW. Uh, Roland Deeroff reminded me yesterday, you've been here before. Several in, times, yeah. In a little I've, air studio. Uh-huh. I've been through here. I've eaten at the nice cafe in Spindale <laughs> All right. with the good sandwiches, yeah. So. Cool. Well, we're glad to have you back here, and you're playing tonight at the Gray Eagle in Asheville, tomorrow night at the Evening Muse in Charlotte. Songs like this first one, maybe, that'll start off our session. I think this one will be in the set tonight. This is called The Flood in Color. <laughs> Clap a lightning I'll awaken To a foot of water Standing in my basement It started rising It took me under The flood is coming This is not history In black and white now In a perfect storm There isn't any high ground end of childhood the end of summer the flood in color They tried to warn me I wouldn't listen And now all at once I'm drowning in my kitchen My legs are broken I'm treading water The flood is coming The flood is coming I tried to bargain I tried to reason But the sky was deaf, the rain was never ceasing It's not some cheap bed I can cover The flood in color The flood in color Listen close now I was dead wrong To think that things Could work themselves out In the long run Pay attention Heed the thunder The flood is coming The flood in color Joe Pug here on WNCW Live in Studio B. And uh, a song that really resonates with us here today after a lot of the rains we've had with the floods and such. Might resonate with folks tonight if it makes its way into the uh, set list tonight, the Gray Eagle in Asheville, uh, and tomorrow the Evening Muse in Charlotte. Um, But, of course, sometimes things like floods and all are, are not just about rain and thunder. They're a metaphor for something else. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, that's the song. I, I have... Um I have three kids. I have a seven-year-old, about to be seven, four, and one-year-old. And most people um, experience parenthood and fatherhood and motherhood when their first child comes into the world. You hear it described as like the most joyful experience of their life, you know, breaking through the ceiling of any other joy that they've ever experienced before. And I experienced parenthood um, 
not through that, but through sheer terror. <laughs> when my first son was born, yeah. it was the scariest I've ever been in my entire life. So, uh, I per- that song was written about a year or two later. So perhaps it was in response to the, to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you're not alone. But you know, I'm wondering, you know, just what it was that you were terrified of. The responsibility. Okay. Like doing it wrong, not being there for man. I've been. A, I was a well. I'm a nightclub musician now, but I've been a nightclub musician in my early twenties, going to bed at one thirty in the morning, getting up at nine thirty in the morning. You know, for fifteen years. So I'm not exactly the. <laughs> I'm not exactly the. Um, uh, what you would see in the dictionary as your your typical parent, I guess, it, or the, at least that's what I thought at the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was worried that I didn't fit the mold, but I've since learned, of course, um, that there are very there are very different molds that you can be to be a good, ineffective parent. Yes, so. yes. Well, maybe you're alluding to perhaps the inspiration behind a song that you released on what to us was your debut, uh, A Nation of Heat. We got this little EP in 2008, and I don't know if, if I can describe what it was like for us to get it. You know, we get a lot of music here at the station, a lot of CDs, especially back in the day before digital stuff. But here is a CD with with very little information on it from someone whom we hadn't heard from before, uh, mm-hmm. not from a record label that we were familiar with. And, you know, we, we try to listen to everything and give it a chance. And we put yours in there. And, oh, my gosh, Joe, songs like I Do My Father's Drugs, that one in particular, it just hit us like... You know, I, oh, comparisons to Bob Dylan are so cliche, but still we were like, you know what? This is that same kind of spark and, and lyrical imagery that, yeah. we're, that we hear in some legends like that. That and other stuff on that little EP. Uh, thank you for sending it uh, us back oh, in yeah. the day. Whoever sent it, it sound, seemed like it came from you directly. It was like a little yeah, something you I, were I doing yourself, it right? Independent. And yeah, I mean, even to this day when I, when I play shows, people will kind of apologetically afterwards, they'll always say, I- I'm sorry to make this comparison, but you you sound like Dylan. And I'm like, you're sorry. I never feel sorry for comparing me to who I consider to be like the greatest living artist of the 20th century. You know <laughs> All right. I mean? uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah, I mean, like I, I take, uh, thank you. He's, he's a major <laughs> inspiration uh, of mine, obviously. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's clear. I'm, I'm, I'm twirling in the vineyard that he, uh, <laughs> that he plowed. You know? yeah, that's right. With acoustic guitar and harmonica and harmonicas. You've got about five of them here, it looks like, as he puts on another one. Uh, well, I and... was going to play a different song, but now that you mentioned I do my father's drugs, I, I figured it'd be rude if I didn't. Uh, play that one. So. It, it would only be rude if I were to say, play this certain song next. And I ain't <laughs> going to do that. You play whatever you want, whenever you want. But but yeah, that song and others on that EP were great. And then a string of other really cool albums that we got from you. And then we were surprised to see A Nation of Heat Revisited. Yeah. And um, on your website, when you describe it, you're, you're very particular. It is not a reissue. It is not a, um, what, a remastering or something. It's Well, it's a revisit. A it's reworking? a completely new album. So yeah. that first album that I sent you, uh, to this day, remains my most popular album. It's the one that people want to hear in concert. Mm. But it was almost like a solo demo. It was me, acoustic guitar, and harmonica. And um, that was not because that was the artistic vision for it at the time. That was because that was the amount of money I had for it <laughs> at the time. You know what I mean? And that was the amount of skills that I had. And I didn't have any money. I didn't have any time. I didn't have any access to recording equipment. I didn't have any access to excellent musicians. Uh, and then I spent about 10 or 15 years on the road. I definitely didn't make more money, but <laughs> I, I found enough friends um, who are excellent musicians along the way who could help me out with it. And so I sat down to um, record it in the way that I would have recorded it had I had the access to to people like this at the time. So a bunch of wonderful musicians uh, play on it. Courtney Hartman uh, sings on it. Derry DeBorha of Jason Isbell's 400 unit. Um, plays keys on it. Brandon Flowers of the Killers sings on it. Um, a bunch of people uh, uh, jumped on that one to to make it come to fruition. Yeah, it's really well done. It's a really Thank nice uh, reworking of it, revisit of it. 